appreciate it being off. Well, good morning. Welcome to the service today. Pastor Mike here and the Abundant Love Church family. We're glad to have you with us today. I trust I trust that we are live and online. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> We're laughing because last week it showed us being offline, but, but it evidently wasn't offline. We were online still. Praise God. Well, t- and let me have you turn, if you would, in your Bibles to John's Gospel, chapter 14. John's Gospel, chapter 14. And we're going to pick up on our series of messages about the Holy Spirit today. Uh, I tell you, I don't know of many subjects that are more dear to my heart next to the blood of Jesus than the baptism of the Holy Spirit because I know what a difference it made in my life uh, to come to the realization that, that we had an opportunity for such an incredible relationship today I, I love this translation there's a little translation called the translators new testament and i believe it was published by the british and foreign War, foreign bible society world british World. Uh, here i'll tell you in a minute <laughs> <You're right. laughs> british and foreign bible society that was it yeah okay and and i love the translation of what we so often refer to as the Ephesians prayer but because it tells us in short what God has invested within us the church today amen in uh, Galatians uh, Galatians Ephesians chapter 1 yeah go to Galatians we're going to read the Ephesians prayer in Ephesians 1 look down with me if you would to uh, where where do you start with this it's just so rich um Let's just start down at about verse 15. He's explaining why he was praying for these folks. He said, This is why ever since I heard of the faith you have, because Jesus is your Lord, and the love you have for all God's people, I have never stopped giving thanks for you. I remember you in my prayers, and I ask the glorious Father, who is the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you the spiritual gifts of wisdom and insight as you come to know him. I pray that your minds may be so enlightened that you may know what is the hope. Now, when the Bible uses the word hope, it's talking about blood-bought potential. Amen? It's not talking about, you know, dreaming and wishing and sure do hope to win the lottery today. (laughs) It's based on something definite, and that which is definite is God's word and the blood and the power of the blood to redeem and to provide us an inheritance. Amen? Yeah. And so, you know, God God didn't even leave it to you to earn your way. I mean, that would have been a fair deal, but Thank God. he made us meet to be partakers. That means he created you with the capacity to partake of the inheritance that he called you to receive by the blood of Jesus. Amen. I think we need to go back and re-examine a lot of the words that we read in the Bible every day and just take for granted we understand them. Right. <clears throat> Glory to God. Uh, so he says I pray that your minds be, may be so enlightened verse 18 I pray that your minds be, may be so enlightened that you may know what is the hope or what the hope is to which he calls you the glorious wealth which he invites you to share with all his people and the limitless scope of his power at work in us now where is that power at work? In us. It's in us. In us. He didn't say one day. Right. But the implication is that right now, the power of God is at work in us once we believe in him. Amen. I think that's the problem. A lot of people have yet to come to believe in him. They just haven't quite believed what God has already said is so. Mm. And, and, and we see that so often. That's us. why there's a lot of people today that their concept of praying for healing is to pray and somehow coerce God or convince God to heal them. And the truth is, is God wants you convinced that he's already provided healing, and it is but for you to receive it. Amen. And the same thing's true of the Holy Spirit. You know, e- even uh, for years and years and years among the Pentecostal brethren that were a little bit more enlightened about the Holy Ghost, uh, they would have tearing meetings as though they had right. to to wait till God got in the mood to <laughs> decide to fill them with the Holy Ghost. And mm. They had to have some kind of a special meeting. And I'm convinced God is waiting for the church to catch up still. Yes. He's not, there's not, not another thing he needs to do. No. 
but the church needs to catch up. We need yeah. to see what he has done and begin to walk in the light of it all. Amen. Amen. And so notice this. He said he wants us to know what is a glorious wealth which he invites us to share with all his people and the limitless scope of his power at work in us once we believe in him. Now he tells us what that, that power is. Listen to this. This is that same stupendous power which he exerted when he raised Christ from death and enthroned him at his right hand in the supernatural world. Wow. There he rules supreme over every ruler, authority, power, and lordship, high above every title that can be named not only in this age, but also in the age to come. Amen. And God has put all things under his feet and given him to be the church, I'm giving him to the church as it's supreme head, speak, speaking of right, Jesus. Amen. Right, right. The church is his body, and when, he, when the body joins the head, then he who completes all things will himself be completed. Mm. Amen. Mm. <laughs> I kind of believe that's his subtle way of saying when we catch up, things are going to be all right. <laughs> Amen. Uh, well, anyway, I can remember years ago, I, uh, you know, I, I had received Jesus when I was a little child, but I never knew. My church never taught anything about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We would sing that that wonderful hymn, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Mm. But in my mind, that was just everybody on the face of planet Earth that we'd all just sing, right? right. I had no idea it was a reference to the tongues of men and of angels. I didn't know. Uh, I, I, I was clueless. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know there was anything more to be had of God. I somehow had this concept of, of salvation as being that when well, you ask Jesus into your heart, you hope it worked, but you're not real sure if it did or not. And you really won't find out until you pass from this life or Jesus returns. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, we believed all kinds of ridiculous things and things that weren't scriptural and didn't give you a whole lot of hope. I mean, a lot of desperation, but not a lot of sound biblical hope. Yeah. You didn't have a real solid expectation of what was going to happen because you didn't really know. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea that, that God the Father had provided for the Holy Spirit. Um, we, we've been reading for the last several weeks about how uh, God the Father sent us and the Holy Spirit has done a dual work in our lives. We've, we've not referenced that a whole lot, but we have referenced it, uh, where we were baptized into one body by the Spirit, made to drink of one spirit. Yes. Yeah. And that word made to drink of one spirit means that God created us, I believe, to be sustained by an ongoing relationship Amen. whereby we are constantly drinking yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Uh, turn, turn back if you would real quick. Uh, you know, sometimes the Pentecostals get it as wrong as the Baptist or the yes, Methodist sir. or anybody else. But turn back if you would in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5 just a moment. Ephesians chapter 5. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and let's look down if you would to Oh, let's see. Uh, let's let's pick up in verse um, fourteen. It, it says down here, "Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil." Now. In short, I believe what we're being told here is that, that there's a pattern set forth in Scripture after which we ought walk. Uh, we're not to stumble blindly through this spiritual life that we're called to live, but we've got the Word of God and the wisdom of God to direct the steps of our feet. And, and uh, I believe if he ever wanted our feet to be like mm. Hind's feet in high places, yeah. he wants the believer's feet today to be sure-footed yes. and, and definite. Uh, you know, it's kind of sad. I'm, I'm, I'm praying. I've been reading, and, and I'm going back and feeding a little bit about the Argentine revival. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny because the author of the book that I'm reading, I don't even know the fellow's name. I'll have to go back and look. But the author of the book I'm reading <sighs> talked about how uh, in, in his day, they were living in a very similar circumstance to what we're seeing prevalent in the, the, the church today. Mm -hmm. People were filled with the Holy Ghost. People were experiencing miracles here and there. 
but there wasn't a very very uh, widespread move of God in the body uh, in, well in the world today yeah. in other words there, there, there were pockets of people here and there experiencing God but overall for all that God had invested he was getting a very very modest return mm. and this guy was at the point where he knew there was more down in his heart he knew that there was more he knew that we ought to be seeing so much more Thank of God the impact did. of God and his love and his mercy mm -hmm. in the lives of the men that he died to provide it for men women and children mm -hmm. that he died to provide it for yeah. and he wasn't seeing it and he was to the point where he was ready to just quit mm -hmm. he said I missed God <laughs> he said he said this can't be God and 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 me being the will of God if it's not happening in other words he, he, he knew there was more that was due to be occurring in his life and in the impact of his efforts mm -hmm. than what he was seeing. Yes. I wonder how many preachers are feeling that right now today. Right. Yes. You know, uh, and, and listen, I don't think it's a matter of picking up and going overseas. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think that's kind of a quick fix for our egos sometimes. Mm -hmm. and, and I do want to reach, I, I, I want us to reach all we nations reach in the these world. last days. Right. But I don't want to forsake our nation. Right. And, and yes. it, you know, uh, we've we've just settled for too little. We need to reach all. And, and, and somehow we've convinced ourselves that too little is enough, and it's not enough. No. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. And and I don't believe the key is to convince God to do something different or to do something new. I believe the key is for the Lord's wisdom to be made manifest that we can capitalize upon what He's already done and yes. use it to do what He would have us to accomplish. Yeah. He doesn't want to just tickle our egos a little bit. Mm -mm. He wants to reach this world. Yes. And I tell you, there are things that are happening in the world around us today. This last week, we've had a situation internationally where uh, uh, evidently, by all rights and intents, it looks like a spy satellite, uh, two or three of them actually, mm -hmm. or several of them, have been spotted and shot down. And uh, I, I really believe like the devil sees that he's losing his grip and he's doing everything he can in these last moments before the return of Jesus yes. to offset any kind of a revival. And the church needs to wake up and get with the Father's business. Yes. Amen. Yes. And uh, what what happened with this individual about the Argentine revival was, you know, it's kind of funny. We can be so shallow. Mm -hmm. We really can. Yes. And, and we read the good sure stuff. Can. You know, we... We I can't think of how somebody put it, but I heard an author talk about you know how we we always we skip to the end we yeah. we, we don't want to see the world and I used thing. to I remember years ago reading um, the fourth dimension by Paul Cho mm -hmm. and uh, Dr Paul Cho and in the fourth dimension uh, he talks about his triumphs <coughs> and victories as he pursued the the knowledge of God as it pertained to faith and prayer and and my what a church millions of people in the church in Seoul, South Korea. Mm. Uh, you know, they 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 are reaching the world and they then are. and then went to Japan. Yeah. Started to evangelize Japan against yes. his better judgment. He tried to convince God not to send them. <laughs> the Lord sent them and they started reaching Jap Japan. Amen. They were hungry. They were hungry. But the funny thing is is I read that book and I saw all these incredible victories they experienced. And then years later, the Lord said, I want you to go back and reread that book. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done that? You've read a yes. book and you, yes. you, I mean, you remembered it. Lord, I yes. don't even need to read that again. I read it. It was so good. Then you read it again and it's an entirely different book. Mm -hmm. It was an entirely different book. I, the second time I read it, I saw the struggles. Yeah, I saw the challenges that he faced. I never, for the life of me, in the the first reading of that book, and I, I and when I read a book, I don't just read. I, I read it. I reread part of it. I reread it. Right. And, I, and, <laughs> reread. and, and, and so I'm really pretty thorough with it. Mm. But in the first reading of that book, I never saw where he stood several stories up in an unfinished drafty cold building in that Korean winter mm. uh, begging God to let him jump and take his own life yes. because he felt like such a miserable failure. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I'm so glad he didn't jump. I'm so glad God would not and, let him and other ministers take his don't. life. Other ministers don't. Amen. Don't. Amen. Don't. Don't lose heart. Don't. Amen. Amen. You know what? Just because things aren't working where you're at, as things are right now, doesn't mean that they can't work. Right. And, and it's kind of interesting because that really is to a degree what the fellow that I'm reading this book after about the origin that's what he seems to be describing he's ready to just pack it up and leave and and forget about ministry and just figure that he missed ministry and the Lord challenged him he said I want you to give yourself to me eight hours a day minimum yep he said I want you to begin to feed on my word and spend eight hours daily in my word and in prayer Mm. And that's what gave birth How to the Argentine revival. Wow. Somebody was willing to finally settle back and let God dictate. In other words, instead of praying for 30 minutes before a service to see if, if God might do a few little tricks here and there, mm -hmm. you know, do you know what I mean by that? Yes. You know, we, we go to a service and one or two words of prophecy mm -hmm. or... Or you know, and thank God for the gift of prophecy, the gift yes. of tongue. Yes, we, we think we're thankful for the gifts, but there's so much more that God Hallelujah. wants to do because there's so much more that needs to be done. Yes. Amen. So many that need and, to be uh, reached. And so here, here we are. I, I had you turn over here to Ephesians chapter five, and he's telling the church here to wake up. He said, verse fourteen, wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. You know, I've seen some tremendous miracles happen in the course of my life and ministry, but I'm not satisfied. No. I won't be satisfied until we see a... a, a, a I believe, listen, I, when I first came back to the Lord back in the, the late 70s, I remember the Lord telling me that this world has yet to see revival as He intended. Amen. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know, the, the, over the ages, there have been various facets of revival that have occurred. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the, the Pentecostal revival, where men started recognizing that the Holy Ghost was for today. And I believe we're still in that. I still don't, I'm still not convinced the, the, the church world at large has received all that the Father intended in terms of a relationship with the Holy Spirit yet. Amen? I, I just believe there's more. There is. I believe there's more. There is. And I don't believe it's that God needs to do more. <coughs> I believe it's that we need to open our heart. We need to lift up our eyes and look beyond ourselves and our wants and desires yes. and the needs that we perceive yes. and, and look at it from God's perspective. Yes. There's a lot broader horizon out there than we've yet to, right. to, to right. gaze upon. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. Mm. We need the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Well, so he's telling them to wake up here. Wake up. Look on down, if you would, real quick. He said down here in uh, verse 15, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. What's he saying there? He's saying, if you know the, the will of God, you're going to understand how to walk, and I believe where to walk, <laughs> and how to get there. Amen? Yeah. And he goes on to say in verse 17, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, mm -hmm. but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, that word unwise means one thing to us today, but really, essentially, what it's saying is, don't be content to stay ignorant where you're at. Right, right. There's more to be learned. Ralph was referring to that earlier. We were talking a little bit and, and how we, we, we learn something. And it, it's kind of funny. There are times that the Spirit of God will give you insight or revelation and understanding into a particular truth or maybe one facet of that truth. And, and from man's perspective, that revelation of God can just take your breath away. And it can seem so massive and far-reaching, and it, it may indeed be. But it doesn't mean it's everything that God wants to show you. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. so much more, amen? Right. right, And so here he is, and he, he's telling them, he said, redeeming the time, the days are evil. Be not unwise. Don't be ignorant. Don't be ignorant. Don't think you know it all to the point that you're content with what you have where you're at. No, no, no. But understanding what the will of the Lord is. And do not, be not drunk with wine. Now, what happens when a person gets drunk with wine? 
Hmm. <laughs> you want a nice <laughs> answer? <laughs> <laughs> they act out of character. They lose their filters. Right. Their they do. Go down. Their inhibitions go down. They lose control of their faculties a lot of times. They lose control it of their faculties. Wine, it affects their perceptions. It affects their, it, it affects their actions. Mm. It affects their judgments. Yes. Mm. <laughs> right? right? I mean, yeah. just simply put, we we see people that's that's intoxic people that's intoxicated <laughs> people that are intoxicated and sometimes we say they're not acting themselves right right right, right. sure <laughs> why because they're not they're like you said they've lost their filters <laughs> I, I can remember losing my filters a time or two <laughs> and so, and it wasn't nothing to brag on mm-hmm. uh, you know I can't ever think of a time where I got intoxicated I look back with pride boy I was really you know, smart for doing. <laughs> but in this case, it says, "Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit." Yes. What's that saying? Is is drawing a contrast between the life of a believer and the life of a sinner, mm. between the life of one that's given to alcohol and intoxication, and one that's given to God and oh, surrender. Yeah. Do you know what it's telling? It's telling you that if you partake of God to the level He would have you to partake of your relationship with Him, then it's going to intoxicate you, but in a good way. You're, you know, when you drink too much alcohol, you're the worst version of yourself. Yes, sir. But when you drink in of the Holy Ghost to the point of intoxication, you are by far the best version of yourself. Yes. It's yes. amazing. I, I can remember years ago we went down to uh, 8th and Main here in Jacksonville. Anybody that's ever been to Jacksonville knows where 8th and Main is. Before I ever came to Jacksonville, uh, Van Brooks, Van, Bill Brooks was my pastor in Bradenton, and Van talked about this mysterious place in Jacksonville <laughs> called 8th and Main. He Jesus. talked about looking for a guitar and coming up to 8th and Main and going to the pawn, pawn shops. shops. And, uh, and and finding him a guitar. And I believe he actually found his guild guitar there mm-hmm. that he plays, I guess, to this day. Uh, but anyway, I'd always heard of 8th and Main. And, and it's not too far from where we're situated here over on the north side. So I can remember it, it just began to appeal to my heart that there, there were unsaved people down there, people that had yet to hear uh, of the Jesus that we knew the Jesus of the Bible, and people that needed the power of God. You know, people that are enslaved to the bondage of sin need more than a simple little pat prayer to pray one time to recover right. from the bondages of sin. Right. They need the blood of Jesus, yes, and yes, they need the Holy need Spirit to, to help them to, to integrate the impact of that blood into yes. their life yes. through a daily life lived in yes. the power of God yes, yes, and yes. in the revelation of His Word. And so we went down there and started reaching out to people, and it was so mm-hmm. funny because I, I, I used to be a very shy person. In fact, uh, here I am called to preach. I love to minister the Word of God. I count it such a privilege, such an opportunity to share the Word of God with people. Yes. And, and yet, back when I was, uh, before I was walking with the Lord, and, and before I just utterly went down the tubes, I, I, I started to go into law enforcement. <laughs> That's really hard to believe because <laughs> I was the antithesis of that <laughs> in many ways. But I started going to, I signed up two different times to take college courses mm-hmm. toward a, a, a career in law enforcement. And, and both times I signed up to take these courses, I joined into a, uh, well, one of the first class I had required me to speak publicly. Public speaking. <laughs> and I could not bring myself mm-hmm. to do it. Mm. I, I, both classes, I went and I paid good money to sign up for these these classes and they announced that your first job is going to be first assignment your first assignment is going to be uh, an essay and you are going to have to speak this before the class publicly mm. I never returned to class mm. yeah. wow. neither one of those I, ne- I could not bring my- I could speak from the back of a class just fine I could be the class clown just fine. Mm. 
but I could not say anything meaningful or productive or intelligent while standing in front of a group of people. I just could not bring myself to do that. I, 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 what happened to me? Well, when I, when I came back to the Lord and got <laughs> filled with the Holy Spirit, there was so much in me I wanted to say. <laughs> and I can remember telling the Lord, I didn't, you know, it's kind of confusing over the course of my life because I can remember as a 12-year-old about to turn 13, the Lord dealing with me about a call on my life uh, and, and asking me if I, what I thought about the pastorate, being a pastor. And I dismissed it because I did not have any idea of the relationship I could have at that time with the Holy Spirit. Mm. See, he's the helper. He is the helper. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Let, let's look let's look down here real quick. I, I got a... I'm, mm, we're almost out of time, aren't we? I'm no. sure are. <laughs> no. He said down here, see that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. In other words, it's up to us to learn how to walk as God intended we should walk. And as we learn to walk as God intended we should walk, then we'll be able to do all kinds of things that we never dreamed possible or imagined ourselves doing. He said, doing this, we'll be redeeming the time. The days are evil. Don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy, Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Speaking to yourselves. Now, who's he talking to here? Believers. He's talking to believers, but notice this. He said, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. That word filled is, is an ongoing, in an ongoing present tense. Mm -hmm. I, I can't think of a better way to say it right. In other words, you know, it's kind of like when you were next in line at the water hose when you were a kid, and the kid in front of you will not quit drinking. Yep. <laughs> it's like you have found that source of refreshing, and you refuse to relinquish it because you found it so essential <laughs> that you just cannot spare it. Amen. When do you ever get enough of the Holy Ghost? When you quit drinking. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm. but all too often what we've seen in our day is people have quit drinking too quick mm. you know we've seen for years and years where one particular denomination saw the need of the Holy Spirit and they thought that the way you got the Holy Spirit was to tarry and to wait until somehow there was just a sovereign move of God whereby the Holy Spirit was poured forth they didn't understand that from the day of Pentecost forward, the Holy Spirit had been poured out upon all flesh, mm -hmm. and it's simply up to us today to receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Listen, I don't care if you're a Methodist, a Baptist, an Episcopalian, a Cat. I don't care if Jesus is your Lord. If you've been born again, the Holy Spirit is available to you. You were created for this. Yes. That's what Paul was telling the church at Corinth when he said that we've all been made to drink of one spirit. You were created for this relationship yeah. that would constantly continually infuse you with power mm. don't ever think that you've come to the place mm. where you've got enough power how many times have we seen people over the years that have talked about wanting to witness the miracles that that, that mm. were witnessed among uh, believers in Jesus day and by right. Jesus in his day right. you know we, we go to somewhere like a, a grocery store and we see a, a child that's afflicted and say, and we know in our heart of hearts that it's not God's will for that child to be that way when will the church quit quit satisfying itself with feeling bad about those things and start getting so filled with the Holy Ghost that the Holy Ghost within them and that awareness of the power resident within them begins to move them. When I was down at 8th and Main, i got to get back to that before we get out of here. Mm -hmm. When I was down at 8th and Main, I started out kind of timid. I was so shy. That's why I brought up about how I quit speaking or quit college twice because I couldn't bring myself to speak publicly and I was so timid and I was so shy I remember as a little child I'd be out somewhere with my mom when she was shopping and she would encounter a lady that she knew a friend of hers or somebody and and, uh, and if it was a particularly if it was an attractive lady I'd get so shy and I'd duck behind her well I, I caught myself doing that even as an adult there were times I'd be out with my mom and I'd run into somebody I, I remember one time it was a girl I used to date mm -hmm. 
and uh, and she to, to her credit very pretty girl mm-hmm. but i can remember i saw her and and my mom was coming up behind me and i scooted back let mama get between <laughs> me and that girl because i was just so timid about her but here i am and i'm down at eighth and main and i mean that is is uh man i tell Meets you jesus Meets yeah jesus. yes yes and, and i start witnessing to people mm-hmm. and i start out kind of slow and, and uh and and there's something about when you get into that flow yes. that just gets hold of you. Hallelujah! It's like that wine. You you you, you start sipping on that wine, and before you know it, you start doing things that you'd never do normally. Yes. So you start talking ways you'd never talk. Mm-hmm. You get bold, <laughs> and I'm not saying that's a good thing, but the same thing happens when you give in to the moving of the Holy Spirit in your life. We're sitting back here waiting for God to initiate something, and He did. Mm-hmm. He did. He sent His Son to the cross yes. to make way into your heart and, and to create a, a place in your heart where He could come by yeah. the Holy Spirit and abide within you. And affect you in such a way that that by comparison, the only thing natural that can compare to it is drunkenness. Mm-hmm. God wants the Holy Spirit to hold court in your heart yes. and to influence you in such a way that you find yourself emboldened Praise God. and you find yourself talking and saying and doing and, and reaching and touching people that ordinarily you might not even notice. And I can remember, I, 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 after I was down there for just a few minutes, just timidly talking to people, and, and, and we started praying for a few people, and miracles started happening. There was this one little man down there. I remember Glenn and Laura Kistler mm-hmm. were down there, and, and they were ministering to this little fella, and they came over and got me, and they said, said, come over here a minute. There's this man down here, and he's in this car, and he's getting out now because he wants prayer, but he's sitting in the car because he came down here with his daughter. He's He's got severe arthritis, and he's in constant pain, and we told him God would heal him. I said, well, let's pray for him. And so we went over and we laid hands on this little man and his his face. All of a sudden, his, it's like his eyes just opened. He said, I'm healed. Wow. All that pain left him in that instant. Yeah. And I can remember, uh, 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 there was just a, a sudden move of the Holy Ghost. You know, people want to see a move of the Holy Ghost and say, well, here, this preacher, that preacher's coming to town. Miracles are where the sinners are at. Praise God. And yes. we're not supposed to follow the signs and wonders. That's right. right. The signs and wonders follow well, the preaching of the gospel, the right. good news. Believers telling the word. people that don't deserve it could never earn it mm-hmm. and, and and probably are clueless as to what can be theirs, but telling them that, that God loves them right where they're at, just like he loved us right where we were at. What have we been doing? You know, mm-hmm. what's the church been doing? Mm-hmm. We 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 experience a move of God, and then we try to bottle it. Yeah. And if anything, we ought to be looking for ways to get the lids off those bottles and get out there. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, it starts with the Holy Spirit. Yes. It starts with the Holy Spirit. Yes. He, he, he said, be not drunk on wine, we're in his excess, but be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Well, how long do I have to pray, Pastor? I don't know. Pray until you start doing what God wants you to do. Amen. <laughs> you know? Pray until you get so stirred up you can't help but tell somebody about Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's what I started noticing happening with me. And uh, and and I love it. I mean, to this day, we we were recently at a at a Whataburger, <laughs> and there were there were these three guys there. And I, there's something so smug about religious pride. I don't care what religion it is. There's something so smug and arrogant about it, mm-hmm. and it just gets on my good side. <laughs> and I can remember we were at, in, up in Yulee at Whataburger and there was a young man there and he was so full of himself and so full of his religion just happened to be Jehovah's Witness and, and uh, uh, I, I, I sat there you know and, and what happens is when you're filled with the Holy Ghost 
I don't mean you used to be, but you're filled with the Holy Ghost. It's an ongoing, living, present, ongoing experience. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you you just you, what you need to do is pray, Lord. Okay, give me wisdom. Yes, yes. And help me to speak this in the least offensive way possible. Because mm -hmm. God's not going to be offensive or hateful or no, snotty. No, no, Amen. No, 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 I mean, no. Sometimes Jesus might have stretched it, but he had that prerogative. He's the one that died for folks. He spoke in love. <laughs> yes, he did. He absolutely did. He even reached out over Jerusalem and, and pled his heart. Yes. He said, I would have gathered you. Yes. And, and uh, he, there was no question in his heart toward the people, even mm -hmm. when he spoke bluntly toward them. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, so I, next thing I know, I'm over there and I'm talking. Hey, I hear y'all talking about, uh, I, I was kind of loose with I said the Bible. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I said, well, have you ever been born again? No, no. I said, well, I, I said, I, I came to tell you about Jesus. A couple of them were real hungry. They were, they were. There was an older black gentleman, a younger black gentleman, and the one that was that knew it all <laughs> was a young, young white fella. And uh, not that color matters, no. you know. There are ignorant people of all colors. Yeah. Uh, and he got he got defensive immediately. Got very defensive. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I said, have you ever been born again? I said, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way to heaven. Well, they don't even believe you can go to heaven. They believe that's taken up by the hundred forty-four thousand. That they're clueless. Mm. And, and so I started talking to him a little bit. I, I said, I died. I've gone to heaven. I said, I, I've died three times, and I, I've been to heaven. He said, oh, you've been to heaven? He said, if you've been to heaven, why are you here now? I said, because God sent me back to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, it's funny how that smugness disappears in yes. a lot of some truth. Yes. You know, I, 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 I well, realize I, I cheat because I'm relying on the Holy Ghost, even when I talk to people. Mm. See that don't don't think it's up to you to convince the world to receive Jesus. That's right. He'll take care of that. Praise you just God. tell them what God tells you to tell them, mm -hmm. and and just stay filled with the Holy Ghost. And it's amazing what will happen. And and the simplest words that God can use to touch people on the deepest level. And I got a hush. We're we're mm, Robin. You go so ahead. Good. This is so good. I'm. Mm. I'm ready for revival. I'm 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 tired of religion as usual, and I'm tired of doing everything we've always done and doing nothing more than what we've always done. Well, <laughs> you said we we try to bottle moves of God, but there's a problem. God is alive. That means, and the body of Christ is alive. So there's always growth taking place. There's always maturity coming Amen. into play and things change yeah. and it's interesting God will use different avenues that he used to didn't use but it doesn't mean it isn't God Amen. I, can, I still remember that whenever revival came to England I'm trying not to cry because I can't talk when revival came to England the people from the bars began to put scriptures mm -hmm. to the songs, Other to day. the little ditties mm -hmm. that were played on the piano in the bars. <laughs> well, some of the, some the, religious of the favorite people, hymns of our day were first sang in bars of their day. The religious, the religious people, I'm thinking of Uncle Arthur Burt. I remember yes. him speaking about this <coughs> as a kid, going to home meetings that Uncle Arthur Burt was at. But anyway, the religious didn't like it because they said they're bringing what's, you know, in the pub houses into the church. The world, yeah. And, and God strongly reprimanded those who had ears to hear, those who would listen to him, because he was so, he was so glad that they were singing the word, that they were getting into the word and singing the word of God. I want to share something. I, I read this it was so sweet it's just the sweetest testimony i think we can think that what we do or what we contribute is so small but it's not it's not whenever we do it in faith it's not when we do it with reverence and with diligence the things of god when we look to the things of god this is a testimony out of a 
a Dad Hagen mini book. <clears throat> and it was so sweet. He started talking, and this is the testimony. A Sunday school teacher in one of the Pentecostal churches, <sighs> try not to start crying again here, in one of the Pentecostal churches I pastored in North Central Texas was a widow woman with five children. She and all the kids would pick cotton for 40 cents a hundred. <clears throat> Golly. Can you imagine? I'm they assuming lived, 100 pounds for 40 cents. I'm assuming. They lived in a little old house behind another house. Yet she'd come to the parsonage on Saturdays and say, Brother Hagen, we made a few dollars to buy a little food. And here's the tithe. I don't want to wait until tomorrow because I'll spend it. I know I will. I need it so desperately. I'd take it. And as she left the parsonage, I'd close the door and weep. I knew that I had to take it, otherwise I would be depriving her of blessing and benefit. I've had her come by with a dime, saying, we made a dollar, here's the dime, here's the tithe. Her oldest daughter spent seven years in the first grade. Mm. In the first grade and never learned to write her own name. She never got out of the first grade. Finally, the authorities asked her mother not to send her to school anymore. Here was a 14-year-old playing with the seven-year-olds. There were no special classes or state schools for children like her in those depression days. In church, she acted like a three or four-year-old. In church, she acted like a three or four-year-old. She had about that mentality. If she happened not to be sitting with her mother and wanted to get up where she was, she would actually get down, scoot along on her stomach under the pews to get up front. Then she'd stretch out on a pew like a little kid and yeah. go to sleep. One night during a revival, this girl went up to the altar. Nobody asked her to go. And she knelt along with the others. She got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke with other tongues. Instantly, there was a drastic change. Before, she wouldn't bathe. If she neglected, her appearance would be pitiful. <clears throat> but overnight, the very next night, she came in, sat down, and acted as intelligent as any 18-year-old young lady. Her hair was fixed. She was dressed up. She looked nice. We could hardly believe what we saw. Receiving eternal life and the nature of God increased her mentality 90%. Amen. This was one of the greatest miracles I have ever seen. It, it happened at the beginning of World War II. This girl went away. She eventually married a uh -huh. young man who was in the war who ended up he he uh, passed away in the war and she had several children and they said that her and her children would be on the front row of church every service just as faithful as her as her mother had raised her to be yeah. always had her tied on blue. i was thinking about that the other day i remember when granddad granddad i don't know if y'all remember this but i remember churches used to be their members would would have a number on their envelope and they would get a box of envelopes we had a every year. Every year yeah. And I remember it's so funny. We were watching Andy Griffith the other day, and they were getting ready to go to church. And he walks over. To, he comes down the stairs. He walks over to a table in the corner of the living room, and it's a wooden box. And he opens it up, or a cardboard box. And he opens the top up and pulls something out. Starts writing on it. Pulls something out of his pocket. And I knew exactly what he was doing. And the reason I knew exactly what he was doing is, is I remember Granddad doing it. Yeah. Every Sunday morning, Granddad would go to their box in the living room after he had on got on got dressed and was all ready to go and he'd pull it out he'd get it you know <laughs> lick it with their information on it and stuff like that but this woman years later when she was just 30 years old that Hagen came back to that church and asked how she was doing and the secretary of the church took him out the front door and she said you see that community that neighborhood that new set of ha homes that being built over there she's building those homes she, that's her construction company. Actually, She's I think the there were several developments. She said, you several? see that one? Yes. She built that one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
and it was nothing. The change came, and I thought it was so sweet because her little mother, it's so subtle, her mother, the Sunday school teacher, who was who was put in high priority on the things of God. And, and I thought it was so sweet. There's times when we've tithed because we knew we'd spend it if we didn't tithe. Yeah, yeah. We knew we needed to get it in. And we wanted to get it in. We wanted the things of God to get first attention, not last attention. But it was so sweet. When she received Jesus and the infilling of the Holy Spirit and prayed in other tongues, the difference was night and day. <laughs> night and day. God can still do that. God Amen. can still do that for anyone. People who need healing, they receive Jesus. They can receive. In, in, do you know that in other countries, they preach Jesus not only as a savior of our soul, but T.L. Osborne began to preach. He's also a savior and healer of your physical body. Anything going on. Invite the healer to come live on the inside of you. Amen. And people get healed left and right in other countries where they're taught this Amen. from the Word of God. We need to teach it here. You were talking about how we need to stand for our own our own land as well as we want to reach the world, but we don't want to neglect our own communities in the process. Amen. God has so much that he wants to do. There are so many that he wants to reach. There are so many that are hungry. You were talking about JWs. I have a friend. I just saw a post of hers, and she she found her journal from 2013 and 2014 where she started journaling, and she said about coming out, was in a very abusive marriage, um, found it very difficult to break away, did not find support from family members who were also within that denomination, <coughs> but by the grace of God came out. By the grace of God came out, and she's she loves Jesus. She's born again now. Her and her husband love the Lord, and God's just continuing to do a work in Amen. their lives. Just, just so much healing comes with Jesus. Amen. So much healing comes with Jesus. I just think it's so sweet. Let's pray with people. All righty. Father, we just thank you. Listen, if you're out there today and you've never been born again, uh, and you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, and you want to receive all that God has for you, just make this confession of faith with me. Father God, I approach you today, placing my faith in you. I believe, Father, that Jesus is Lord. I call him Lord and Savior, and I believe that you raised him from the dead. Your your word tells me that with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so I thank you that I'm born again now. Now, Father, I also see that you provided for the Holy Spirit and to fill me with the Holy Spirit. So I right now choose to receive and believe that I do receive the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your presence and power yes. so I can do your will and understand you and know you more intimately you, in, Jesus in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now get ready for the adventure of your life. Amen. Listen, we went a little bit long today. Um, I just believe it's so important in these last days that we get said what God wants us to get said. Yes. And, you know, we're trying to do our best. Y'all pray for us. Let me ask you to do this as well. We're in the process. We're looking at and getting a lot more focused now toward... Uh, getting a book written detailing a little bit of my experience of having died uh, three different times. <laughs> and uh, if you've got some questions about what it's like or what happened, message them to us. I, I can't promise it to you, but we'd like to. You know, sometimes your questions help us to see something we hadn't considered that may need to be addressed. Yes. And I'm not going to make up answers for you if I don't have answers. No. Uh, but if I do have some answers or some insights to share, I'd be happy to try to share them with you. Amen. Yes. Thank you for being a part of our lives. And, and we're just praying. I believe God has called you. There is something that he's got for you to do <clears throat> that you alone in these last days are equipped to do. And we're just so thankful that he's helping you to find uh again the direction for your life yes. and the empowerment for that direction yes. that he affords you through his holy spirit in jesus name amen amen see you next time